These graves are gardens from the gardens of paradise or they're pits of the fire. May Allah protect us and our loved ones. So how does a person protect themselves from the punishment of the grave? You think of how long we stay in these graves. Abu Dawood reports that the Prophet وسلم, had come to attend the burial of one of the Ansar and he was solemnly sitting and the Sahaba were around him and it was as if they had birds on their heads. That's how quiet they were. That's how still they were. As if birds could come and perch on them. And he had a twig in his hand and he was scratching at the earth with it. And then he broke his silence by saying, "Sta'idu billahi min adab al-qabr. To seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the punishment of the grave. He said, Asta'idu billahi min adab al-qabr. He said that two or three times. That moment is something that I want you to reflect upon. The Prophet said, I'm sitting at a grave and he's telling the Ummah to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the punishment of the grave. You know, these graves are our places of, they're either going to be gardens of the gardens of paradise or they're going to be pits from the pits of the hellfire. And one of our most constant supplications that we make in every prayer is to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the punishment of the grave. So then how do we protect ourselves from the punishments of the grave? Stay tuned inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go over seven ways right now. What if there was an easy way to protect yourself from the punishment of the grave? You know, Ibn al-Qayyim talks about this in his book, The Soul, a ruh And he says, one of the things that protects from the punishment of the grave is the most beneficial sleep that a person can have. And that is before they go to sleep, they lay down and they think about whatever mistakes that they've made and they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of the daily sins that they make, that they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the major ones and the minor ones, they hold themselves to account and they commit that tomorrow, I'm not going to return to those sins ever again. And so Ibn Qayyim says, if that person dies, they die upon repentance. And if they waken, they awake to a new life with new repentance and new commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and new energy. So he says that sleep is the best sleep of a person's life and it's the most beneficial sleep of that person's life. And guess what? It's a sleep that we can all have every single day of our lives. That when we lay down to sleep, that we simply remember our day, whatever mistakes, no matter how long we've been practicing them and, and, and falling into those sins, that we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we sincerely commit that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with another day, that we're not going to return back to those sins again. And if that person truly awakens repentant, then inshallah ta'ala, every single night, if they were to do that, according to Ibn al-Qayyim, that person will be inshallah ta'ala in a state of goodness and that will protect them from the punishment of the grave. So that's in the dunya, how do you protect yourself actually in the grave? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that when a person is placed in their grave and the grave is sealed and the people begin to depart, that person hears the movement of their sandals when they're leaving. And then two angels enter into the grave and now the questioning begins. And they say, who is your Lord? What is your religion? And what do you say about this man? And so if a person is a believer, then they will say, Allah is my Lord. And my religion is Islam. And I say that he's the messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah says, When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah will give steadfastness to the believers with the statement of steadfastness or the statement of truth in this life and in the hereafter. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us steadfastness, inshallah ta'ala, in our graves to be able to make the statement of truth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a messenger. Islam is our deen. And so when that person answers the angels correctly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, my servant has spoken the truth. And Allah will then command for them to expand for him their grave, their grave, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala close them with the gardens of paradise. It says, clothe them with the gardens of paradise and open for them a door to paradise. And so they will have in their grave the scent and fragrances of air from Jannah in their grave. And then if a person responds wrongfully and they say, I don't know. I don't know who my Lord is. I don't know who, what my religion is. I don't know who this messenger was or this man is. I have no idea. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then say, Kadaba abdi, my servant is lying. So, 
make his his grave a pit from the pits of the hellfire, make for him a bed from hell, open for him, clothe him in the clothes of the people of the hellfire, open for him a door into the hellfire. And so the smoke and the heat of the hellfire will be in their grave. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So we learn the second here thing that protects us from the punishment of the grave. And the most important thing that we can carry is tawheed, the belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that when a person is entered into their grave and they're questioned about Allah, about Islam, about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they're able to speak the truth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that ability. Look at all of the things that we do to protect ourselves from harm in this life. You have your seatbelt that you put on when you get into a car, seatbelt when you put on when you get into an airplane, the the, the coats and the, the clothes that we wear in the wintertime, bulletproof vests that people might wear if they're out in, in places that are dangerous, whether they're press or whether they're officers or what have you. And yet, what do we have to protect us when we enter into the grave from the punishments of the grave? The Prophet Sallallahu said, said that when a person is placed into their grave, Salat is at their head, Siyam, fasting is at their right, Zakat is at their left, and charity and good character to people and kindness to your parents is at your feet. And in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says that punishment approaches the head and Salah says, you can't pass from here. And then that punishment approaches the right side of the body and then fasting says, you can't pass from here. And then punishment tries to approach the left side of the body and zakat, the obligatory charity says, you can't pass from here. And then punishment tries to approach the feet or from the feet and then charity and kindness to parents and good character says you can't pass from here and so these actions that we're doing every single day also being aware and being inspired recognizing that not only will it benefit you on the day of judgment not only will it benefit you leading to paradise but it'll benefit you in a more immediate sense in a person's grave that these actions inshallah ta'ala will protect us from the punishment to the grave but then there are some people that don't get questioned at all and who are these people the prophet sallallahu alayhi said them said that of the qualities of the shaheed, of the martyr, he mentioned six qualities. And one of them is, is that they are protected from al-fattan. They are protected from the questioning and the trials of the grave. And so in a hadith in the Nisa'i, the Prophet ﷺ was asked, why is the martyr, why is the shaheed not questioned or tried in the grave? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Kafa bi ala fitna. That the shining and the dazzling of swords over his head is enough of a fitna for them. Meaning they're already tested for the truthfulness and the unwaveringness of their faith by being in the terrors of a battlefield. And so they're protected from the terrors of the grave for that effect. Sheikh al-Albani, rahimahullah, he commented on this and he said, this status of martyrdom is hoped for for everybody who intends it sincerely due to the hadith of the Prophet sallam, the statement of the Prophet sallam, when he said, that whoever intends martyrdom sincerely for their, from their heart or asks it sincerely from their heart, they will be written to have the status of martyrs even if they die on their bed, as reported by Muslim. Even if a person dies of a natural cause, but they had desired martyrdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they asked for it, then that person, inshallah ta'ala, is hoped that they will reach that status even if they die in the most natural, the most peaceful death in the world. But are martyrs on the battlefield the only people who are considered to be martyrs? No, there's actually a lot more categories that are considered to be shaheed. The martyr, the shaheed, is not just the person who dies on a battlefield. The Prophet ﷺ came to his companions and he said, who do you consider the martyr amongst you? And they said, O Messenger of Allah, the person who dies in the path of Allah, the normative understanding of what a martyr is. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, then the martyrs of my ummah will be very few. I mean, how many are those people who die on a battlefield like that? And they said, yo, O Messenger of Allah, then who are the martyrs? He said, whoever is killed in the path of Allah is a martyr. Number two, whoever dies in the path of Allah is a martyr. Number three, a person who dies by plague is a martyr. Number four, a person who dies by stomach illness is a martyr. And number five, a person who drowns is a martyr. And there are more categories still, but this hadith in Muslim defines for us five types of people who, if they die, in that state, they die as martyrs. And so we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects them from the punishment of the grave and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts them all as shuhada. That is with regards to how a person dies. What about when a person dies? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and I, I want to give you good news, that it's way more frequent than Laylatul Qadr and it's way more frequent than the 10 days of the hijjah In fact, it isn't yearly, it is weekly. 
Prophet وسلم, says in hadith that's reported by Tirmidhi that there is no Muslim who passes away on Friday or the eve of Friday. So Thursday night. Thursday night or Friday until Maghrib, except that they are protected from the punishment of the grave. And so this is a great consolation. This is a great hadith for you to know if you're ever consoling someone who lost a family member or a friend. And if they happen to pass away on Thursday night or Friday, you can tell them this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu and make dua that they be protected from the punishment of the grave. Our seventh way is to go back to the daily basics. And that is to recite Surah Al-Mulk. The Prophet Sallallahu said in a hadith that's reported, that's authenticated by Shaykh Al-Bani Rahimahullah, that Surah Tabarak protects from the punishment of the grave. And another hadith reported by Tirmidhi Rahimahullah, the Prophet Sallallahu said, a surah that is 30 verses interceded on behalf of its owner until it protected them from the punishment of the grave and that is Tabarak al-Ladhi biyadihi al-Mulk So reciting Surah al-Mulk and Ibn al-Qayyim comments on the same book the soul he says that this surah will intercede on behalf of a person on the day of judgment asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them from the hellfire and it will intercede on behalf of them to protect them from the punishment of the grave So what I always imagine is that Surah Al-Mulk is like this lawyer for you on the Day of Judgment. It comes and it, it reaches out, comes to, to protect you and to argue on your behalf. And it comes to protect you in the grave. And so Jabir ibn Abdullah, radiallahu anhu, he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would not go to sleep. His daily habit would be that he would read Tabarak al-Ladhi biyadihi al-Mulk and he would read Alif Lam Mim Tanzeel As-Sajda, Surah As-Sajda. He would recite these two surahs every single night. So developing the habit, at least Surah Al-Mulk, every single day before you go to sleep, reciting Surah Al-Mulk, it's only 30 verses, developing that habit that you be protected through it, inshallah ta'ala, from the punishments of the grave. So we ask Allah to protect us from the punishments of the grave. And the last one, I know you weren't expecting a bonus, but we do have a bonus. And the last one is to simply make sure that you don't jump out of the salah without making that dua. Don't rush. Don't jump out of the salah and just do the bare minimum. Before you get out of the salah that you say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab al-nar wa min adhab al-qabr. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the punishment of the hellfire and from the punishment of the grave wa min fitna al-masih al-dajjal and from the fitna of the Antichrist wa min fitna al-mihya wa al-mamat and from the trials of this life and the next. That small dua, just 20 seconds after every salah or in the salah, but at the end of every salah, inshallah ta'ala will protect you from the punishment of the grave we conclude this video saying, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you from the punishment of the grave. Jazakum al-khair. Assalamu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum.